Neon Genesis Evangelion is in a certain class of anime, one which to me defines the best of the 90s. Certain 24 to 26 episode anime of the era managed to nail down one specific emotion and explore it more in depth than most things before or since. Anno's Evangelion takes the role of depression. The series is a mold-breaking adventure into sadness through meaningless symbolism and faux philosophy. I mean those words more than I ever have. As someone trying desperately to understand my own depression, I've spent too many nights poring over the impactful scenes of Evangelion, looking for something or anything to talk about. This channel slowly evolved into an experiment to explore my own issues in relation to anime, and although it's produced some videos I adore, it also puts a pressure on me to find something meaningful in everything I watch. In my desperate attempt to look at something so perfectly encapsulating of my feelings, I searched night after night for some deeper meaning that would connect the dots in my head and provide the aha moment of the anime where I could look at the evidence presented before me and say here is the message that will get me through the next few weeks. Even after making a video on Evangelion before, I've never got that feeling. I'm never one to praise myself, but if I'm not confident in my own skills, what I present on this channel is nothing more than a failed experiment. So I'll defer to my own experience and say that every analysis, profile, or discussion I've made has had that kind of moment. Not at first, but always. After so many nights, I have not and will not find that in Evangelion, because it doesn't exist. This video is more for myself than my content usually is because I want to finally put to rest my Evangelion monster. We'll still be covering the anime itself and the story behind it though, so I think this can be a video for anyone, but it will get personal later. Now it probably sounds a bit rude of me to state as a matter of fact that someone else's creation is meaningless. As someone who hopes to craft my own stories one day, I'd be annoyed to no end if that's what someone else did to me. But I'm not saying anything that Anno himself hasn't said. Many, myself included, have poured days of thought into the imagery of Evangelion, from the very name itself to the cross-shaped explosions that cap off these somehow gruesome mecha fights. The invaders of Earth are called angels, Shinji has issues with a father who's always looking down from above, a weapon named the Lance of Longinus is used by a character who dies to see the Earth reborn. Surely in here there's a message to be had about faith, the advantages or dangers of belief, or discarding the path dictated by the heavens. No, there's no such thing. Famously, it's often cited that the crew of Evangelion put no more thought into the Christian imagery than we thought it looked cool. Everything I've found says this is true. Assistant director for Evangelion, Kazuya Suramaki, had this to say about it. There are a lot of giant robot shows in Japan, and we did want our story to have a religious theme to help distinguish us. Because Christianity is an uncommon religion in Japan, we thought it would be mysterious. None of the staff who work on Ava are Christians. There is no actual Christian meaning to the show, we just thought the visual symbols of Christianity look cool. Toshio Okada, a co-founder and former president of Gainax, described the situation as so, although he wasn't involved with the production personally. Mr. Anno apparently never read the Bible, despite the heavy Christian symbology of his work. He just picked out a few interesting technical terms. And in Anno's own words, I am not familiar with many things in Christianity, and I have no intention of approaching it or criticizing it either. I could throw up any number of examples of this. It may not be a good sign thematically, but as someone having to sell a product, it's a smart idea. He knew what needed to be done to sell his anime to be produced. This isn't the only example of such behavior. Talking with the character designer of the series, Yoshiyuki Sadamoto, this exchange occurred. By the way, why did you make this new work a robot? When I asked why, I only remembered that I wasn't convinced at the time. As a business? No, really, this is because I thought that uh, robots, space products, and beautiful girl products were the best when considering the commercial value in order to pass the original project. It's easy for sponsors to pay. This isn't to disparage in any way. Knowing he made the decision based around this and still made one of the most popular creations in his field is absolutely insane, but it does provide some context for the anime thematically. Is it possible to have the idea based on what will sell and still imbue it with some excellent thematic elements? Yes. 
uh, but it's also just as possible that some of what arose from Evangelion is simply a happy accident due to decisions like that. It feels like the entire story of Evangelion is one that depicts these happy accidents or overreach of fans who want to believe that something that moved them must mean something deep since they are deep and unique people. So many interviews with Anno have an exchange that includes the interviewer referencing some moment and some theme, only to have Anno deny them in simple terms. Or how they felt a character was developed to mean something greeted by a response of, who knows, or something similar. One that stuck out to me was Yuko Miyamura, Asuka's voice actor, explaining how she viewed the stage in the final episodes of the original Evangelion like that of folding chair therapy. The creator's response? I didn't know that. He even says that there wasn't a theory behind Evangelion, the series wasn't planned to go a certain way or accomplish some theme. In many interviews, he describes his creation as a live show of sorts, saying that it wasn't a set plan to be followed, but rather an evolving mass of anime. It was all done live. Uh, well, we were playing, we ran out of performance time, performers, instruments, money, and even the score. There is something I actually love about this, the idea that NGE grew quite organically over time. It very much fits with it being a source of raw expression, which often doesn't occur following any true pattern. And this isn't contained to just plot elements or structure, it covers the entire project. One of the famous missteps, Anu remembers some character arc mistakes. I made a miscalculation. Episode 6 was too soon. In the case of Rey, it was the line in Episode 6, you won't die, I will protect you. And also at the end, when Rei says, I don't know what kind of expression I should have at a time like this, and Shinji says, I think you should smile, and Rei smiles. I felt like, ah, oh, this, is, this is going to work. At those two points, Rei's character was created. However, when I, I thought about it afterwards, I cursed. If she has already communicated with Shinji there, then isn't she over with? At that moment, Rei, for me, was finished all at once. He elaborated later on how this influenced Rei in the anime moving forward. Even in the midst of making Ava, I suddenly realized I had forgotten her. Her very existence. In episode 7, I remembered and added a single shot of Rei. How much can Rei, her interactions and thoughts, really mean when her own creator forgot she existed? Well, he never did the same with Asuka, he expressed never thinking she would be as complex as she became. That was just something that happened under his nose. It's things like this that start to make me see Evangelion not as something lesser, but as something to be toned down. I'll be the first to admit I look too deeply into things. There's a reason I stick to dark-themed anime that provide what I'm looking for on the channel. I decided recently to cover another Urobuki work because he had provided me with an endless amount of thought that led me to new and amazing realizations and videos time and time again. Evangelion may have gifted me with a lot of thought, but it just barely gave me one conclusion in one video. To once more quote the man himself about depth in his work, I am ignorant of philosophy. I have never really done anything philosophical. Ava has been described in this way, but it is pedantic rather than a work of philosophy. It means that if I use this word, even though I don't really understand it, then I appear intelligent. That was Ava. I want to find meaning in it as much as anyone else. Believe me, intentional or not, I want to find something of my own issues in it and explore part of why they exist through this medium. I want it to give me some answer as to why it captures my feelings so well as other anime had one before. But the one who made it keeps saying that doesn't exist. And in that desire for myself, I think I was doing the largest possible disservice to Evangelion. Looking for why within the anime was never the point. It was looking for why the anime was that mattered. At this point, everyone knows that NGE was Anno expressing his own depression in the form of an anime. This is the most famous start to explain some of the why behind the anime. In a few interviews, the topic becomes steered towards the terrible men included in his work. Take, for example, Gendo Ikari, who Anu seems to admit he had a looser grasp on than those interpreting his work, saying things like, that may be it, or I wonder what it is indeed, about his character and why any of the women would have liked him. 
And there's a reason to pose this question. Why would Yui have ever liked him and why would Ritsuko as well? They were both women full of potential who fell to his desires. Look at Shinji, he is portrayed as weak and creepy, performing his duties simply because he has nothing else. He nearly gets Rei killed, does so with Masato, and we have the hospital scene with Asuka. And Keiji just keeps women from moving on, passively with Asuka and directly with Misato. This isn't some thematic element that relates to other aspects of the story and crafts something deeper. This is a depiction of how Ano viewed men, and by extension, himself. I think that's because I'm thinking only about myself. Even if I think about girls, I think everyone is actually doing it for themselves. I'm really just moving faithfully to my desires and pleasures, but it seems like I'm saying for girls as an excuse, and I really hate it. A man isn't that kind of thing, he's more selfish. In other words, I'm just doing it because I feel comfortable thinking about girls. In presenting himself, a man, as he views them, it's possible to take what he's feeling and make that same feeling occur in someone else. If you asked me if the men of Evangelion were working in selfish, hypocritical ways, I would agree. The feeling I have of them matches the one Anno expresses in Evangelion. Another feeling I get watching the anime is a lack of connection. Similar to how the men are terrible, not many of their relationships with the women mean much or last. The three children have their moments, but usually end up in conflict or apart from each other. Shinji and Asuka just use each other for what they need. Their parents are absent horrible or passed away long ago. At times it feels like they just don't like other humans. They only like the feelings they can get from them, the utility of orders, or the endorphins of praise. Have you always felt something like a sense of isolation from others? A sense of isolation? Well, I wasn't really aware. It's probably that I wasn't all that interested in human beings. It sounds strange to speak of depersonalization disorder, but there was no reality in your actual relationships with other human beings. My actual... well, I probably just wasn't interested in anything other than myself. Something like narcissism? Well, something like that, I think. In the end, it was something like not having much interest in the things around me, including my family. The truth was, I probably had no interest. I didn't really know myself. Do you dislike people? Um, well, before people, I dislike living things. It's clear to see where this element of the anime came from. There's no connection because in the creation of the anime, there was a lack of understanding of connection. And we could keep pointing to so many things about the anime and words that Anno has said himself. Probably most famously, we can see how every character hates themselves, some more or less, but present in all from pure apathy to calling themselves scoundrels. Returning to Anno's childhood school for a TV program, this exchange occurred. That was the most heartbreaking way to say it, but Anno never shied away from admitting his self-hate. Whether the terrible man, lack of connection, or self-hate, Many of his characteristics make up the anime. These things aren't thematic, they're just real. In multiple interviews, he would also describe what he was working on, at the time still Evangelion, as a work of non-fiction. For him, these weren't made-up characters existing in some fake world with random relationships. It was a projection of himself, his deepest thoughts and feelings. I'm often asked if Shinji-kun represents an old version of myself, but that's not the case. Shinji-kun is my current self. I act like a 14-year-old boy. I'm still childish. I wanted to move forward from there, but the result was I ended up regressing back to myself. A dead end. Normally, I would never speak about a person the way I do a character, but to analyze NGE is the same as trying to analyze Anno himself. I'm not fit for the job, I'm not a psychologist or therapist, and I can't speak for anyone else but I still need to finish this for myself. I say that because what was supposed to be an easy video on a short schedule ballooned into a full-on mental breakdown. It turned from a quest to explore if Evangelion was meaningless into a quest to discover who Anno was into a quest to find myself. 
I pored over old forums and wikis for translations of interviews with Anno from the time of creation. I watched ones I could find on YouTube which somehow escaped the clutches of copyright. I felt worse after each one. I've been in a terrible place in general for years. Sometimes I can be very good at ignoring it for a while. But when I come back to Ava, it always brings back the reality of my world. The thoughts in this video were cried out on the shower floor, or to a familiar ceiling, or while I stood in place trying to find the will to move. Because I never had someone explain exactly what I was feeling in so many ways. I could point to many examples, from a lack of confidence in his work to questioning originality in it. I started reading and watching endlessly these interviews to see what more I could uncover. But this is the one that fully broke me. Expression is the process of creating something that's missing, attempting to get an idea across to someone else, trying to make yourself whole at the same time. For those who have a hard time relating to the people around them, it's at the very least, kind of like being able to pass something along to maintain a relationship between you and those people. That's what I think expression is. At least for me it is. I'd never heard anyone explain exactly what I felt about why I create. I didn't even realize it fully myself. When I joke about solving my issues through anime and making these videos, that's what it is. It's the process of taking what's in my head and using a common vessel to communicate it to others because I know no other way. It's trying to make myself whole by pondering the issues I see in myself and find in the works of others. Someone I've never met but related to anyway broke down what I'm trying to make the purpose of my life. When it was expressed that it's great he got to do what he wanted in life, this was Anno's response. You've got it all wrong. This is the only thing I can do getting married, having kids, raising them to be adults, that's far and away more of an accomplishment than making a movie. And the biggest accomplishment of all is to do all of that and make anime at the same time. In my case, I've managed to get this far because I gave up everything else. I don't see the need for anyone else to sacrifice everything else in life for this though. When I look at my friends who are married or own a house or have a steady job, I don't know how to feel. Is what I'm doing worth it? It seems like I'm putting in so much more into what I do, but getting rewarded less. And if I feel that way, why do I do it? Wouldn't it be easier just to live like everyone else? Like Anno, I do it because it's all that I can do. When I imagine myself in a regular life, it never ends well. I can't deny that in many ways this is a cheap escape. It's hard at times, but it means I don't face the things I'm afraid of. Physically, in the real world, it eats up my time. I can excuse pushing my issues to the side and saying, well, I can't, I need to work. I can avoid doing anything social by saying that that'll come eventually. First, I have to grind out my path in life. This could be a harder path, working nonstop, but for me, it's easier because I can ignore everything I don't want to face, especially when we get into the specifics of what I do. It's no secret that anime is often an escape for us, a community in which a larger than usual proportion views themselves as outcasts. No matter how much reality I inject into these videos, they're also an undeniable escape. When I analyze the mentality of my favorite characters, it's an insightfully indulgent act. I'm gorging myself on the media I love to cope. Discussing which moral system prevails allow me to shift my thought away from the physical world of myself and my own reality onto an abstract fictional world where I'm detached from the matters being covered. Even talking thematically, an act which has in its nature an extension to the real world, I can internalize it to the property to such an extent it denies my own reality. I was growing anxious and shaking the deeper I dug into Anno's words, because I, someone who wants to become a storyteller myself, was presenting exactly what this storyteller hated about the world. I really hate the fact that animation, or at least Evangelion, the work I've been doing, has become merely a place of refuge. Uh, nothing but a place where one escapes from reality. By becoming deeply absorbed in it, people simply ran from the pain of reality, and from there was hardly anything that came back to reality. I claim Evangelion is meaningless because it was intended to be so. It's not like Anno and company were simply terrible writers and only did things because they looked cool or picked words at random from an old book. There was a lot of intentional work on the anime. 
but most of it was directed into invoking specific feelings. Disgust. Sadness. Anger. It was meant to be an anime which, in many ways, would be dissatisfying. And this makes me shift my perspective on episodes 25 and 26. I thought at first that he was just lying when he said they were always the intended method of delivery. They must have just run out of money and that was that as the production fell off the rails. But seeing so much of his thought process about the anime, I believe him now. The deconstructed nature of the final episodes could very easily be called disappointing, going from stunning physical scenes to abstract and static images, from epic fights for the earth to internal screaming matches. This was the point. Without cells, we may do by using the sketches of the storyboard in their place. It wasn't a matter of having time to make them or not. Cells are symbolic representations. After having drawn Asuka with a marker, as soon as Yuko Miyamura gave it her voice, it was more Asuka than ever. Once you hold the prejudice uh, that you can't use anything but cells to represent characters, you finally become a fetishist. A cartoon is composed uh, of simple signs and therefore, from the outset, it is a fake world, right? Uh, nothing but an optical illusion. These final episodes were a matter of tearing down the idea of animation, removing the long-held beliefs about it, and thus destroying the reality of anime. Seeing how overly invested people were not just in his work, but in fictional works in general, he used his creation as a wake-up call. I wanted the viewers to wake up and return, dousing them, for the moment, with cold water. That was there. I think this was something good for the viewers. Many of Anno's interviews see him discrediting anime fans in this kind of way, as people lost from reality who needed a wake-up call back. Uh, keep in mind that this is also from a Japanese perspective in the 90s, so it may not align with what you've seen yourself elsewhere and now, but could have been much more true for him. Even now though, at times, I agree. I agree because I needed that kind of wake-up call myself, as we explained earlier. But is he just being harsh? It sounds like it, but let's look at his own story. Why can I say that? Well, I noticed what I was missing for me in my heart. For 21 years, I have been an anime fan, and now, 35 years old, I notice with sorrow, I am nothing but an honest fool. It is another case of his own feelings injected into the anime. As much as he wanted a wake-up call for all of the fans, he wanted one for himself. As much as he was hard on the fans, he was hard on himself. This is why I describe his most famous work as meaningless, but not as pointless. None of it, the characters, the plot, the names, mean anything, but they all converge to one point. The point was acknowledgement of sadness and of the real world. To not lose yourself in fiction and remember that you have real issues. Evangelion has no real symbolism because it's not supposed to. Cool robots fight odd designed monsters, all with obscure and foreign names that explode in weird ways because it draws you in. The anime is like its own character Asuka saying, look at me. But there's nothing to look at. It breaks down into simple images, rough sketches, destroying the immersion. It brings you back to reality, in the end of Evangelion, quite literally. It uses footage of a theater, showing the audience for the first time directly, themselves. And over top of it, Shinji rambles about dreams, about not understanding reality, how this is the dream, something he's crafted for himself based on his own preferences to fool himself, like interpreting the anime in whichever way fits our story. It's no mistake that these words play over footage of people sitting and watching before it cuts back to Shinji's decision to return to the real world. There was no meaning to the human instrumentality project. Halfway through originally writing it, they didn't even have an idea of what it really was, because it isn't anything more than a vessel saying wake up from the dream. Evangelion is literal. It has no intended meaning because it is non-fiction. In that way, Evangelion is one of the most successful works that I've ever watched. I always come out of it with the exact feeling they depicted. Evangelion is nothing more than one man's depiction of crushing and depressing reality. I'll come right out and be honest. I've written and tossed out so many endings for this video. It's a mess of nearly 30 minutes and I think a lot of the points and topics get lost throughout. I, there's seems like there's no coherence to it whatsoever, like it jumps around, but 
There's nothing I can do about that. I have to move on from this obsession. And in many ways, a messy, somewhat incomplete, broken down video is the most representative thing for Evangelion. It's me trying to make something entertaining and engaging, but also airing my own issues like Anno. I relate to him from everything I've read, but I also hate him. Maybe that's like how he expresses hate for anime fans because he is one of them. Maybe I hate him because we're so similar and I just hate myself. Chances are I'll never meet him, so I'll probably never know. We're from different times and cultures, so I can understand how he feels. But if I met him, I feel like I'd want to say he was wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with escaping into a new world when the real one is so broken we hate it. Especially when the series you escape into brings the real world into itself. Through meaning, series connect us to the real world. Even if I use anime as an escape, when I engage with someone else about the themes, philosophy, what it did right or wrong, I grow my circle. I'm forced to see the viewpoints of others and consider their thoughts and feelings. And those things can make me think about my own situation, take on a new and different perspective, brighten my day or darken it, either one. When we escape together, it ceases to be fiction. We all have one reality. It's ironic in discarding theme and symbolism and meaning, Ano discarded the thing within anime that provides people the ability to connect. And it's ironic that he used a shot of fans in a theater to prove his point. They were out in the world building connections, sharing an interest, and having fun. Like what we all do together here. I don't understand people all the time. Sometimes I just sit back and think about how interesting we all are. I get to see thoughts and opinions from everywhere across the whole world. Because of you. I get to make these wild, off the rails, insane videos. Because of you. We just proved one of the most popular anime of all time wrong. That's a feeling I never thought I'd experienced before. I think that's happiness. And I hope these videos and ideas and experiences bring the same enjoyment for you getting to share moments with people anywhere and everywhere and any time. I don't know what this channel started as. It was so long ago it could have been a ploy for attention, connection, expression. I don't know and I'll never know. That was lost to time. I just know what it is now. It's us. And I'll never stop being grateful that it is us. Thank you.